was talking recently to someone who had given a gift to a lay-run meditation center last year. Came back this year to find that it disappeared. And when he asked the people this, at the center about it, they said, well, it's, it's impermanence. Which is not the Dharma of the Buddha. There's a danger in trying to boil everything down to just a few principles. Like the idea that all the Dharma teachings come down to the three characteristics. Just have to accept things are impermanent, stressful, not self. Just let it go at that. The Buddha didn't teach that way. That was a particular teaching to be applied in particular circumstances. And they're much larger frameworks, which include a much larger picture. I mean, he actually taught Dharma and Vinaya. We tend to forget that. And the Vinaya is not just rules, but protocols, patterns for behavior. And it's through the Vinaya that you get a sense of how to apply some of the more abstract principles, and how the Buddha would apply them in specific situations. And a lot of the protocols have to do with learning how to look after the people around you, learning how to look after the things around you. This is an important part of the practice. One of the ways of being unburdensome is that when someone gives you a gift, you take good care of it so that it stays around, and people get a lot of use out of it. They have to keep giving it again and again and again. And so even though it may seem like we're attached to our things because we take such careful care of them, it's actually a principle of the Dharma, which is being unburdensome. It's in that list that the Buddha gives to go to me. And there are other protocols for how to help other people, how to look after people who are sick, how sick people should behave so they're not a burden on the people looking after them, how teachers should look after their students, how students should look after their teachers. It's a very well-rounded training. I noticed someone at John Fuhr would occasionally get students that he felt were not really ready yet for meditation. What he'd do would be to get them involved in doing projects around the monastery. The generosity he wanted to teach them was not so much giving of material things, but just looking after what needed to be looked after. Running errands, caring for things, cleaning things up. I myself, when I have dreams of the Ajans, it almost always follows the same pattern. And Ajahn shows up and I've got to do something for them. One time I had a dream of Ajahn Lee. And what it is about Ajahn Lee, when he comes in my dreams, he comes with bodyguards. And he needed some betel nut, so I had to find him in betel nut. With Ajahn Fuang, it's washing his robes, boiling the water for his bath. For some of the more famous Ajans, they've got huge groups of monks in their monasteries, and they go running off and they leave a huge mess, and I'm there cleaning it up. It's an interesting pattern. It's part of the training I got in all those years with Ajahn Fu and caring for him when he was sick, looking after his hut, looking after things around the monastery. It was an important part of the training. I learned a lot of Dharma that way. And so when you come here, either as a visitor or as a more permanent resident, you have to realize that it's not just for the meditation. The meditation is the heart of the practice, for sure. But the heart needs other organs as well, or you can compare it to the heartwood of a tree. The heartwood, if it doesn't have bark and softwood and leaves and branches, is dead. It's a lot of the little things that we tend to overlook that contribute to the practice. This willingness to give. If you don't have material things, give of your knowledge, give of your time, give of your energy. And look around for opportunities to give. Don't wait for them to be forced on you. That's the true nature of generosity. We've got this problem in the West where there are certain events and certain situations where you have to give get invited to a wedding, you've got to send a gift. Christmas comes, you've got to give a gift. Lots of gifts. And the little spontaneous acts of generosity, those tend to be forgotten. 
but those are the ones that really do show a generous spirit, where you see a lack and you have the opportunity to fill that lack. That's an important lesson. And it's the way in which you become sensitive to one another. We all become sensitive to one another this way. This is something that's really lacking, especially now, as computers are taking over people's lives. When people grow up with computers, they don't grow up with people anymore. They're more comfortable looking at a screen. You go, we see this all over the world now. It's not just here in America. I was recently in Thailand, Singapore, and Malaysia, and you see groups of people sitting around and they're all staring at their little screens. And not, not learning the lessons that come from looking at the people around you, looking at their expressions, looking, listening to the tone of voice, seeing what they're doing, and casting around in your mind to ask yourself, what do they need? What are they lacking? Is there something I've got that they could have? It's how we reestablish human contact, that we also reestablish a kind of sensitivity within ourselves. Because this willingness to, on the one hand, be generous, and on the other hand, knowing how to look after the gifts that other people do give you, learning how to appreciate them, learning how to care for them if they are material objects, learn how to be gracious in accepting other people's help. These are the habits that are really helpful as you meditate, because they develop sensitivity, and that's what discernment is all about, sensing, sensing things that are not pointed out to you. The Buddha gives you lessons on where to look and tells you what to look for, but for you to see the actual movements of your own mind, you've got to be very sensitive, often in unexpected ways. And that quality of sensitivity is best developed through generosity, through virtue, all the standard parts of the path. and reading up on Dharma and Vinaya. Vinaya is not there just for the monks, as John Sawat once said. It's there for everybody. Because when lay people come and deal with the monks, they've got to learn about the monks' Vinaya, to have a sense of what the monks can do, what the monks can't do. And that way they look for ways of being of help. That sensitizes them to other people's needs. And they start looking at their own needs in a different way. This principle of generosity is an important foundation for wisdom. In other words, learning how to be generous, learning how to accept generosity, learning how to take care of other people's generosity. Not just, just in terms of things, but in terms of the things they do for you. That kind of sensitivity then gets turned into your own sensitivity to yourself, what the mind is doing, what it needs, where and when it needs it. Because the most satisfying acts of generosity are the ones that are unexpected. You see an unexpected gap, and you've discovered in an unexpected way that you've got the means to fill in that gap. That's the talent you need to be a good meditator. So all of these aspects, you think of the teachings the Buddha gave to Gautami, they boil down to three principles. One is what you're aiming at as your goal in life, two, what you're doing to develop your mind in that direction, and three, how your relationship with other people relates to that as well. Not getting entangled, being unburdensome, learning to be content. These things all interpenetrate. And if you miss one of the dimensions, the others are going to suffer. And we see other people who are just generous and don't meditate, and we see what's lacking there. Well, the same problem is there with people who just meditate and they don't really understand generosity. For the practice to be successful, it has to be complete. It's an all-around practice that helps you develop an all-around sensitivity. So 
and eventually you can see things you never saw before, and realize things you never realized before, and attain things you never attained before. These things really do make a difference. <laughs>